Well, hello and welcome to Bowtie Life on YouTube, where we talk mostly about life in the garden. I'm Bowtie David, and we live in Destin, Florida, now Zone 9B. Uh, today we are going to be flipping a bed of hot peppers in a mild climate raised garden bed, which is where we are, of course, in Destin. And uh, coming up, I wanted to tell you though, uh, we're going to be doing our first run for compost here pretty soon. Uh, I've totaled my last car. My new car is actually almost done at the garage. I'm very excited. We'll have the trailer and I want to take y'all with me to go get the free compost that I get and discuss a little bit about uh, brainstorming. Oh my goodness, I don't have a bow tie. <sighs> you ever have a feeling you were just naked? Yeah, that was weird. I've only done that once before in the past five years. Okay, so uh, talking about going out and brainstorming where to get compost that's either free or very cheap. There's a lot of sources out there, uh, good quality stuff, and uh, we'll discuss some of that in an upcoming video. That's an answer to a uh, question we had not long ago. Uh, so yeah, be sure to subscribe uh, if you haven't already so you don't miss a thing. And to those who have subscribed, you are my heroes. Um, You've helped grow Bowtie Life to what it is today, and it's just exciting uh, to see the new subscribers joining and comments and the likes on the videos. It's just, it's just very exciting. So let's get into this. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So uh, first things first, um, in my, well, first off, what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be taking these uh, pepper, this pepper bed, hot peppers mostly. And uh, now these peppers, a lot of these are actually over 18 months old. They've survived another winter completely. In fact, a very, very cold winter for here. Um, we had uh, Christmas of 2022, we had 18 degrees Fahrenheit, that's minus eight degrees Celsius temperatures. And uh, so a lot of these actually died back to the ground, but I had taken some measures to make them survive. And I wanted to document better uh, how what I did for this space. Uh, it's pretty well documented in the garden tour, so you should go back and look at that. Um, but uh, today is like the fifth time we have dropped below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That's, that's about four degrees Celsius. Uh, and I mean, just barely a degree or two uh, colder. So um, we're in Destin, Florida, as I mentioned already. So we don't get super cold. Uh, we have mild winters. We have frost most winters. Um, we don't get snow here. It's been a long time since we've had snow. I, I haven't seen snow here. Uh, so uh, it is, it is, uh, cold right now. I, I think we're at about uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, we're just warming up for the morning. So I got my sweatshirt on. It feels just a scooch cold for just the sweatshirt, but I know it's going to warm up pretty fast and uh, we're going to be feeling better uh, real soon. So um, now, okay, so here's the funny thing. In the last video, the one that came out just a Two or three days ago it was the part three of the raised garden bed tour and at the very end of it i said looking at the forecast we have no more frozen temperatures maybe we'll have a a, a mild winter and uh, the very next morning we woke up and the 10-day forecast had the first freezing temperatures coming next tuesday this is today is a week after i record that it's now coming next tuesday and uh, it's supposed to get down to 26 or 27 degrees. Uh, and then as we got closer and closer, we now have uh, three or four days where the morning low is gonna be uh, below freezing. And so uh, it was very funny because I said that, I was like, oh, maybe we're gonna have a good winter and suddenly, nope, we're not. Uh, <laughs> so now, uh, as far as peppers are concerned, uh, a lot of the stuff that we grow are annuals. Now. This is a relatively uh, loose definition. Uh, tomato plants are annuals. An annual means it'll grow for a season and then it's gonna die, okay? Now, I've had tomato plants last over a year. In fact, these uh, Roman tomatoes over here, uh, they're about a year and a half old and they're about to produce their last before they get frozen. Uh, but, uh, you know, they're not supposed to last past five or six months. 
this thing's going coming up on nine, ten months maybe, uh, and so um, we kind of, I, I kind of take a uh, wait and see approach to a lot of my gardening. I, I'm, uh, I'll admit, sometimes I'm lazy, and <laughs> I, I will, I will uh, opt to, um, you know, just see what happens before I just rip everything out. Well. Um, these peppers, these are, this is my hot pepper bed. There's actually an orange bell pepper down, plant down in here and probably a, uh, I'm hoping there's an orange bell pepper we can harvest for Mrs. Bowtie in there because she does like the orange bells. Uh, but it'll be the last we harvest because of this freezing temperature coming up in three or four days. And, uh, but most people don't know that pepper plants are actually perennial. That means they'll live year after year. If you're in a warm enough climate where it never gets a frost, uh, you know, down in zone 10, uh, where it doesn't get cold enough, uh, you can actually grow pepper plants year after year. You don't have to pull them out. And here's the cool thing. On the second year, when it comes back and, and starts growing new leaves, it's already got a fully developed root system and it starts shooting fruit out a lot earlier, which means the second year you could potentially in zone 10, uh, potentially actually have a better crop than the first year. Uh, I've heard people say that they've had these things last three, four, even five years. And I can't imagine that. How big would that plant ha be able to get in that long of a time? And how much produce would it create? It's, it's mind blowing. I get, I watch a lot of YouTubers, uh, some of which are down in zone 10 and, and, uh, I haven't seen any that have grown. In fact, the, the one big uh, chili person that I watch is Chili Chump, and he's up in England, so uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't have that kind of, a, of an atmosphere. But anyway, I wanted to uh, just show you what I'm doing here now. Uh, I am, in this video, I am not overwintering, okay? There is a whole different process, and we're going to talk about that later because we're going to be doing some overwintering in another video. So again, please subscribe so you don't miss that. Um, but here, we're in a mild climate. And we do get frost, but we really don't get much. Um, you know, we, in our forecast, we have three or four days where we could be getting a frost, which is uh, quite a bit. I mean, we've seen more than that, but um, we're coming down to the end of the second half of uh, January. And so this is the time of year that it gets cold here. Uh, this is the normal time of year. This, is, this will be a more normal winter for us, not like last winter when it got down to uh, 18 degrees Fahrenheit or Eight, minus eight degrees Celsius in, in on Christmas Eve. Oh my goodness, that was that was hard to believe. But anyway, so if you've watched my uh, garden tours, and if you haven't, go back and you can see when we, when I get to the raised garden bed tours, uh, uh, about the last third of the video, um, I talk about these beds. And you see, we have some metal uh, arches in here. Now those arches are actually eight foot cattle panels. Now we have tractor supply here. Uh, and if you have a tractor supply or some kind of tractor supply place, uh, you can get these eight foot cattle panels. Now, the reason why I know some people will get the uh, rebar, the cattle panels will actually last a lot longer. They won't rust. Uh, they're galvanized and uh, they're amazing. I, I know people that have been using the same cattle panels for, for a decade or more, and they still look like the day they just got them out of the store. Well, we're gonna see what this plastic, what these arches are for is to hold up plastic, which means what we need to do here is we need to cut all these um, pepper plants back to inside the um, cattle panel. Uh, the, yeah, the cattle panels in here uh, so that we can put our plastic over it. And we'll end this video with that. This, this video will go a little bit long, but I wanna show uh, all the process here. Now, the reason why I'm saying uh, overwintering, there's a whole different process to actual overwintering. And I don't know, this, this may be just cutting back to survive a not very cold frost, a mild frost, uh, or a mild freeze. And I think experiment, here's the experiment. I like my experiments. I think that what we're going to end up seeing here is if it doesn't get too cold, these plants can still survive at three or four foot, or well, two to three foot of height and be that much more ready to go when the weather turns warm again. And so 
Uh, I would love that. That would be just amazing. Uh, we've got our Fatale in here. We've got our uh, Scotch Bonnet. Now, we do have a lot of Fatale, uh, and I am going to be pulling out some of the Fatale in favor of planting new Scotch Bonnet plants. Uh, so I, I have way too much Fatale in here, as evidenced by last year's harvest. Uh, Fatale is nice. It puts in some really warm heat. Uh, it has a different flavor to it. But uh, I started Scotch Bonnet um, two years ago, and last year, I, in 2023, I really fell in love with them. The other one that I fell in love with is Peri Peri. And uh, we have some Peri Peri peppers in here that uh, um, we, just, we just love, 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 and we're going to be growing again. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to be cutting these back, covering it in a, in a low tunnel, a little greenhouse type thing, and uh, we'll see how it survives the winter. You'll be able to watch, because I do these garden tours every month, you'll be able to watch uh, all the garden tours and you'll see the development uh, in, in about three weeks from today is the February, can you believe February? <laughs> okay, February garden tours is in three weeks from today. Um, that'll be after most of our freeze. Uh, and then the following March, uh, in about another four or five weeks, that'll be another four weeks, um, these things will start growing their greenery if I hadn't had to trim them back anymore. So uh, I'm very interested to see how this does in our normal winter. Not like last winter, which was really cold, but a normal winter where we get a little bit below freezing. So I'm gonna turn over here to a uh, uh, time-lapse video so we can kind of get things going and uh, see what we can cut back. Now I will be saving a lot of peppers a lot of peppers because I'm gonna be saving a lot of seeds. Um, I'm planning on using some of these seeds to start new plants this next, this well, this year, it's 2024 already. And uh, especially any Scotch bonnet that are ready to have their seeds harvested. Oh yes, I'm gonna be saving those Scotch bonnets. And I, know, I already know I have some Perry Perry down there too. Scotch bonnet are a little bit more sparse, but the, the Perry Perry, we got a bunch of those. I don't know if you can see that big thing sticking out in the back back there. I think you can. Uh, that's all peri peri and they're ready to be harvested for seed. So that's kind of exciting. Uh, habanero, we got one habanero plant in there. Uh, I'd like a little more habanero, but it's actually, uh, if I have another habanero, it might just be one more. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, uh, one more thing. Okay, so about this uh, cattle panel and I did not I kind of suspected it might help. Uh, with your pepper plants, you know, sometimes you have to put like a, a tomato cage around them or something to help them grow upwards. Well, that cattle panel during the summer has served like a uh, trellis for these peppers. It's kept them upright and growing upwards and looking good. Oh my goodness, I'm just more thrilled than I can express about how the summer performance, because I was gonna pull out these cattle panels uh, in like March of last year and then I saw it was starting to support and I was like okay we really need to leave these because it would not look this good if it weren't for that cattle panel uh, acting as a trellis now so anyway I'm gonna get on with it we're gonna put maybe some music I don't know I might do some voiceover uh, but uh, we'll we'll uh, get going here so before we get started on the uh, time lapse I wanted to show you so this is my hand trimmers. This is the blade. This is what's called the anvil. It's a, it's a bypass snippers. So it holds the branch on this anvil and it slices the branch right here. So one of the things you want to be sure is the piece you're cutting off technically should be against the anvil. What that means is when I go in here and I want to cut this branch, you'll notice the anvil is on this top part that I'm trimming away. Okay. If I had it like this with the anvil underneath, what's going to happen is it's going to crush the wood on the plant and it will damage it. It will do damage. Uh, and so I want to have, be sure, and this is a technicality, uh, you know, it's not going to kill, it probably isn't going to kill the plant, but uh, it's okay. Now notice I'm also trimming just above this little node right here because this is where new branches will be growing. And right now in the winter, there's not a lot of new branches growing. So if I come in here and trim the top of this uh, Tabasco pepper right about there, anvil on top, and we'll see if I can trim it by hand. 
that is about the limit of what I can do. So we got a very clean cut right here. It's at a slight angle. It's not going to catch water. Uh, not that it's going to matter for right now because it's going to be undercover by the end of the day. So here we go with a our first branch pulled from the pepper bed. And I'm going to just set this aside and harvest the peppers off of it later. So as I'm selecting where I make my cuts, like on this branch right here, like that branch right there is gonna be going straight up. That's a good direction. And this is actually doing good too. There's a bunch of good nodes all along this branch growing upwards. But if they're like, uh, if I go over here to this branch here, you can see there's a node on this side, which means this would be growing inside. I would, would not want to keep that node. <coughs> excuse me. I would not want to keep the node going in I want to keep this node right here it's actually going outwards and i would actually cut it just above that node so that the next branch is going to grow right here and grow outwards next season so we're really planning for next year's growth so that looks a whole lot different now doesn't it it's uh, all cut back again this is not for overwintering this is my wait and see approach uh it is not a valid gardening approach maybe i I'm pretty sure, but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on this unless you know you're just getting a very mild freeze. Uh, these things in the covered state that they're going to be going through are cold. I think they could survive. I think they might make it. So uh, we've sa I've saved all the cuttings. We'll show you the cuttings here in just a minute. Uh, I brought them inside the uh, Florida room, uh, or as we call it here in Florida, a room. Um, yeah, so. Anyway, uh, I've cut everything back just low enough to make sure the plastic goes over. Uh, it's going to get kind of dormant, not totally dormant. They may lose their leaves and that's okay too. I, I, I will not be one bit surprised if all these plants lose their leaves after a few days of cold uh, that we're supposed to be having in the next uh, 10 day forecast. So uh, I'm not gonna panic over that, but I will uh, do some updates as, as we go along the way here and uh, hopefully we can see some success here. But uh, yeah, I have uh, um, the six mil plastic that uh, if you uh, look at the uh, video from October 26th, I think it is, of 2022 is when I built this low tunnel. And uh, this is the exact same piece of plastic. I've saved it and uh, it's the exact same piece of plastic. I'm gonna pull it over uh, with this. The, uh, the, the white bricks are loose on top so that 
they can weigh down the plastic when we're done. So, um, yeah, next next thing I need to do here is get this plastic stretched out, and uh, I will um, try to get it over the, the this low tunnel with uh, with as little um, <laughs> blowing away plastic as possible. And uh, if I can get them weighed down on either side, uh, we'll be good. I'm going to need to leave some on the ends uh, for closing in the ends. I will close it in uh, probably tomorrow, which is Sunday, January 14th. So the very middle of the month. Uh, second half of January is normally where we get our coal. So this, is, this should work out, hopefully. Um, but uh, yeah, so... Um, Let's get this thing covered and uh, see if we can get it somewhat secure. I, I, I'll just I'll just leave the ends open until tomorrow, and then tomorrow I will close the ends down. Uh, hopefully, some lizards will get stuck in there. They can probably do a little better inside the tunnel because the sun's going to shine on it. Actually, you know that I think about it, I should probably go ahead and close it up, just because the sun will be shining on it, warming up the soil. Uh, and so, yeah, I think I might just go ahead and close the whole thing up anyway. So there you and go. So there we go. They are protected for the next, uh, probably a couple, two or three weeks. Uh, I will leave this thing on there for them. Uh, I will check the, in fact, I will hang a thermo, I will hang a, uh, um, sensor temperature sensor inside there. So we'll know roughly what the temperature is, but, uh, last year it never got anywhere dangerous so i'm not too concerned about it but uh there's a little bit of airflow in there um it's not perfect but it's good enough to hold in most of the heat so right now today and tomorrow this thing is going to heat up the ground real nicely and it's going to do good um so that uh over the next two weeks which I, we, we've got three to five days below freezing in the next two weeks where it'll just be below freezing for a few hours in the morning that's it so we'll be fine so i got these uh cuttings all sort of organized by type uh, we have scotch bonnet now there's a lot of green scotch bonnet in here i'm not sorry habanero a lot of green ones in here we're not even gonna, we're not going to collect seeds from those what we are looking for is these that are all ripe and will be ready to have good mature seeds there's actually several in here and uh same thing with the, with the peri-peri. It's a pretty big pile of peri-peri. There's a lot of them. Yeah, again, this one isn't quite ready, but if you look down inside here, uh, there's there are some mature ones in there and even some past maturity. So um, if you watch many of my videos, there's that tray of ginger exactly where I said it would be. Uh, I'm going to have to put another cup of water in there, incidentally. But uh, we have, uh, here's the scotch bonnet. That was habanero on the other end. Scotch bonnet and of course Tabasco. Uh, oh my goodness, I don't know how I can harvest another plant worth of Tabasco. My biggest concern though is I have one Tabasco plant. If it dies, I'm out. So I'll probably try to start some uh, as a backup and I can always give them away. And of course the pile of Fatale, which is the biggest pile. Uh, yeah, I got way too much Fatale in this garden and I'm going to have to... Uh, go fewer on those but again if all my fatale plants die i want some seeds to be able to plant some new ones now i think i actually ha still have uh seed saver exchange seeds from 2021 of these fatale which is what these came from could probably do it again easily so there you go thanks for uh following along today <laughs> that's a lot of hot peppers i figure there's probably a few billion scoville heat units in here uh, yeah, billion, you know, that's 200,000 there, there's 200,000 there, there's another 200,000. Yeah, there's a lot of heat in here. Um, for those of who have subscribed on Bowtie Life on YouTube, you are my heroes. It is so exciting to see where this channel is going, and I'm excited to see where it will go in the future. Uh, we are working hard to uh, grow our channel to the next level, and once we reach that point, we can, we'll be able to do so much more. Um, for those just finding Bowtie Life uh, for the first time, uh, this is my own personal journal of everything going on in the garden. With my ADD brain, I've tried logging, I've tried photographing uh, the progress and in the garden, and uh, these videos just really speak to me better. And I actually go back and I'll, like when I'm doing morning stuff in the, 
as I'm getting ready to go to work, I'm a handyman, as I'm right getting ready to go out on service calls, uh, I'll just play my videos in the background. And it's amazing because sometimes I'll be listening and it'll remind me of something. Oh yeah, as a reminder to myself to do something and uh, I go do it. And sometimes we record a video. Uh, right now we are releasing full length videos every two to three days. And uh, uh, we're doing a lot of shorts as well. Um, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss uh, anything on Bowtie Life on YouTube. Um, and uh, there's lots of things coming out. I try to document everything I can. Uh, I mean, it's not everything, but it's, it's what I can get. Um, another way you can help grow the channel is uh, click thumbs up on this video and uh, share it on your social media with friends that are looking for how to get more life and produce from their hot pepper chili beds. Uh, so this is so much more that we can get without yanking them out for a lot of people. Now, uh, I will insert right here, uh, the, the next video, one of the next videos, we have a whole row of peppers that are not in that, uh, the low tunnel we just put up. Uh, and so we are actually going to legitimately overwinter. So if you're somewhere that uh, you can't put up, just put up a low tunnel, then maybe there's another option. And I've actually done the overwintering uh, before with uh, very mixed success. <laughs> so you'll just have to watch that video and subscribe so you don't miss that. But uh, yeah, we got Pepidou, uh, Thai hot peppers, and um, dragon cayenne peppers that we're gonna try to overwinter. And they will sit right here in this room, uh, down in the end down here, where I have a lot of my gardening stuff. And we'll see if we can get them to survive the winter so we can put them back out. And, and again, remember, when you're overwintering something like this, or when you're trying to let it make it through maybe a few days of freeze, um, it's got this great root system. And, and, and uh, the great root system gives it just that much more of a head start uh, that it's going to start producing much faster next year. So, uh, yeah, that's, I just think that's very exciting to, uh, to see that happen, to have the opportunity for much faster production, uh, for next year. So anyway, been fun. Thank you. Y'all have a blessed day.